Hey, what's up, everybody? If you appreciate the format and you appreciate what we're doing here, then make sure you contribute to the Cash App. Make sure you contribute to the PayPal. Make sure you donate to the Super Chat. It's only you and your contributions that keep this thing going. Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Dennis Sperling, and I am back again to talk to you. We are going to continue our series where we discuss um, racism in Latin America. As you guys recall, a few months back, I talked about Puerto Rico. I've talked about Colombia, talked about different places in South America. The reason this is important is because there are a lot of black men who are now beginning to travel to South America. Uh, different places, and you should be aware of the racial attitudes there or the history of racism in those countries. Now, a lot of Latin American people will deny it. They'll say it doesn't exist. They'll say stuff like we're all the same, but they do have a color caste system. Um, and if they're honest with you, they'll admit it. I'm not here to judge anybody because, hell, we live in the United States, which probably has one of the most racist uh histories in the past and that are, are you have history of, of anti-black uh racism breeding farms which gave rise to the 90 about 90 percent of the black americans who live here i.e we went from 300 and 300 000 blacks 300 000 africans in 1780 till 1860 it was four million and so what does that mean that means that you know the myth is not a myth. Thomas Jefferson brought in, uh, you know, the system of breeding in, 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 in the states of Virginia and Maryland and also Georgia. And so, you know, it is what it is. So we are not here to judge. We're just here to understand. So without further ado, I want to read something that I found very interesting. Uh, and it's basically a... Uh, Apparently it's a story, I don't know how real it is, but it, it definitely summarizes uh, the history of Argentinian racism. And uh, this is something that was by Jude Adad. And this is the reason why there are no black players on the Argentinian team. As I watched the Argentinian, as I watched Argentina and Iceland match today and wonder why there were no black players, the Argentinian team when other South American teams have black or biracial players. I remembered a conversation I had last year. It was while I was on a cruise from Florida to the Grand Cayman Islands in the Caribbean between an Argentinian doctor and myself who had walked up to me during lunch one day and struck up a conversation. Uh, there was no hiding the attraction. We had bonded much to the chagrin of the three, her three Argentinian friends. On the deck of the ship that day, she kept going on about how she loves black men and looks forward to traveling to see uh, so she can meet them. I asked her, don't you have black people in Argentina? In Argentina? She said with a matter of fact candor, no, long time ago after slavery, we killed them all. I was set aback. She smiled and I continued, very bad. I'm ashamed of my people. It was very systematic though. So before we get going further, I wanted you guys to make sure you contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App and PayPal. Show your appreciation for me for these hard hitting topics uh, by contributing. I know that I could be talking about all that juicy pop culture stuff. You know, we could talk about all the latest rappers and the latest actors and the latest divorce. And I try to throw that in there. But I think this is important, especially for you men who are traveling in South America, you black men. SYSB it makes no sense to go from one place with, you know, strained racial attitudes or anti-black 
attitudes to another. Okay. Now back to what I was saying. So make sure you contribute to the super chat, the cash app and the faith. I'll try to give you a shout out, but here we go. Um, she said, uh, I was taken aback and she smiled and I continued very bad. I'm ashamed of my people. It was very systematic. Well, very well thought out. First, they forced most of the men to fight for Argentina against Paraguay. They knowingly sent them to into battles that were poorly planned so that the Paraguay army would do for them what they couldn't do for themselves. And that is kill the blacks. Most of them died there. The remaining of them forced to live in this province where there was a plague, a disease that the government refused to curb so that it can also do for them what they couldn't do, kill the blacks. Uh, they refused uh, to set up hospitals, clinics, adequate shelter, uh, food outlets, nothing. They created the best environment for disease to thrive. It killed the rest of the men that had survived the war. The darker you, the darker you are, the higher the chance that will send you to the place to live or to the war to die. The light-skinned women, they force them to sleep with white men so that their children are biracial. They then force the children, when they grew older, to sleep with white men so that the blackness of the skin of the children became whiter and whiter until there was no longer any visibly black people seen. It was so bad that blacks fled to Chile, Peru, Bolivia and Brazil, and even Paraguay, where they were better treated, even though not as well, they should be treated as human beings deserving full equality. At least those ones did not want to kill them and accept it to give them protection and means of livelihood. As a matter of fact, Chile, there was a city called Arica, where black people were so accepted and respected that in the 1700s, two black free men, one called Anzuris were elected mayors, but the white colonial masters from Spain came six months later and nullified the elections. They were afraid of other cities giving black people too many rights, but the blacks who found um, succor did not complain. They sent word for others to flee Argentina and join them. After all, what was canceled elections compared to certain death, then she went silent as though she were trying to replay the magnitude of the crime in her mind again. Then she said, it is a somber tone in order to drive it home to me. The ones the Argentinians did not kill through war, disease, rape or impregnate, fled the country and ultimately we got rid of the blacks. I listened in rising song. She continued academically. So although they abolished slavery in 1815 in Argentina, it continued until 1853. After that, after the main preoccupation of the leaders was how to get rid of blacks, slaves and their descendants. Our president who ruled us from 1868 to 1874, Domingo Fastino Saramento wrote in his diary in 1448. This was long before he became president and slavery ended that in the United States. Four million are black and within 20 years will be eight million. What is to be done with such blacks hated by the white race? It shows he was already thinking of how to eliminate black people before he became president. And when he became president, he succeeded. Didn't the world say anything? No, they ignored it. I am sure most of them wanted to do the same thing but failed. At that time, they admired him. I remember when I would when I would go to Brazil as a child, my father's friend would, would say in, in disgust as he looked at the black Brazilians, we should have had your guts and finished them all. All of them make Brazil white, just like Argentina and the Europeans, she laughed. It is an open secret, just like King Leopold and his genocide in Congo. No one talks about it, but they know about it. At least the older ones do. The young ones, not so much. Why do you think all the Nazis ran to Argentina after World War II? I was silent. She continued because it was the perfect place for the most evil racist history to live. Then she looked out into the infinitely 
blue sea around the ship and sighed audibly before she continued. Sadly, to some extent, it still is welcoming and accommodating of racial hatred. We took the tango from the Africans and made it our own. In Argentina, not one person will tell you the true history of the dance. They don't want to associate it with Africa. In fact, if you ask them about black people in Argentina, they will tell you that there has never been black people in Argentina. They teach them in schools, they rewrite the history, they make it all white. And as I said, it is all underneath the surface. They never come out and say we hate black people. Argentina is only for whites or anything like that. They just fix the country to only be for white people. I looked at her friends, Argentinians like her, who were lounging on the chairs on the deck, clad in their tiny bikinis, drinking pina coladas and smiling. She followed my gaze and then turned to me. Don't be fooled by all those smiles. Scratch the surface and you will see that they all they want is for you to disappear. So that's something that I read on the internet that was put together by somebody named Jude Adada. And um, this is something that I found intriguing. And so what I wanna do folks, um, before we go any further is first say thank you to James Morton. Argentina is renowned for racist, fascist ideology. I do not know any brother that went down there that did not comment on the toxic racial atmosphere. So this is what, I don't know any brothers that have gone to Argentina. It's never been on my list of places to visit. Uh, but, you know, if anybody's been there, feel free to come. So shout out to James Morton. Shout out to Deacon Day. Hey, you guys, this is the truth. You know, this is Dennis Sperling unfiltered. You know, we talk about things like this real thing. So let's go ahead and bring up some articles. I think it's important to go ahead and look at some actual historical articles and some periodicals so that we can kind of digest this for ourselves, okay? Um, I wanna go ahead and, uh, I wanna go ahead and pull this article up, all right? This is from uh, Media Reports in Chicago. Uh, See, yo soy Afro. Yes, I am black. What it's like to be black in Argentina, all right? so. Despite their attempts, there are still black people in Argentina. So let's take a look. Buenos Aires is the myth that there are no black people in Argentina is pervasive. Walking the streets of the nation's cosmopolitan capital, Buenos Aires, you'll likely find European influence, food, style, and architecture, all of it among mostly white faces. Today, the city's population is less than 2% black, but once a substantial community of African descendants has made an indebitable imprint on each, on even the most celebrated and exported aspects of Argentinian culture. All right, let's see here. Um, a series, a series of epidemic wars and racist policies either pushed Argentinian's black population to flee the country or to lead the unfortunate deaths of many. Uh, we got 111 people in here. Make sure you contribute to the super chat. Too. We got to get the likes up, you guys. I want to continue with this conversation, but you got to hit the like button. So go ahead and hit the like button now. Hey, what's up, everybody? If you appreciate the format and you appreciate what we're doing here, then make sure you contribute to the Cash App. Make sure you contribute to the PayPal. Make sure you donate to the super chat. It's only you and your contributions that keep this thing going. Thanks. Hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And also, hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. The only time black men are allowed to speak is when it benefits others. So hey, this is your opportunity to speak. I want to hear from you. And if you want to make this voice louder and clearer, then what you need to do is contribute to the Cash App, the PayPal, and the Super Chat. I appreciate you. Thank you, everybody, for your contributions. I appreciate it. Let's keep it going. Donate to the Super Chat. Donate to the PayPal. Donate to the Cash App. It's your contributions and your donations that are cause for this platform to grow. Let our voice be the voice, the preeminent voice in Black America. 
All right. So you guys make sure you contribute to the super chat, the cash app and the PayPal. Also hit the like button. We got 108 people in the chat room and we only have um, 73 likes. So hit the like buttons. OK, go ahead and do that now. I want to see you guys show your appreciation for this content. OK, that that lets me know you really appreciate what I'm doing. here. So uh, go ahead and do that now. I'll I'll wait. We got so far 73, 74. Got a hundred some people in the chat room. Go ahead and do it. Hit, hit the button, folks. Come on. Don't be lazy. I don't want to have to play another commercial or do anything obnoxious. Hit the like button, please. Hit the like button. Go ahead. 77. You need another 25 people to hit the like button. Also, I'm about 25 um, subscribers away from... 14,000. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead and hit the subscribe button now, please. I'd appreciate that. Go ahead and do that. Um, what we'll do is we will continue reading forward at this point. So, um, as I said, this turbulent history isn't really common knowledge. Schools don't include it in the curriculums, leaving black Argentinians to rely on passing down stories and traditions to keep their heritage alive. The Afro-Argentinian community faces huge hurdles trying to carve out space in a culture that doesn't fully acknowledge its history. But in the video above, we talked to four Porquinos who in their own way are hoping to do just that. Uh, the activist and artist Maria Gabriela Perez doesn't see, uh, doesn't see many faces like hers on the daily commute but sees her culture replicated popular Argentinian customs. So let's see if we can play this video for you guys. So you can say, check out what the Argentinian ladies of African descent have to say. All right, so give it a minute. Um, I'm gonna let it play, there we go. <laughs> Uh, sus abuelos, no sé, españoles, enseguida dice sí, sí, yo soy descendiente de españoles, pero sí, eh, sí, esa descendencia está en relación con lo afro, no sé, así sea uruguaya, no sé, afro latinoamericana, bueno, por ahí ahí la persona no dice. Por eso siempre fue consciente, yo me identifico como negra, en mi casa siempre se explicó, bueno, somos negros, somos negros. Y cuando la gente te diga despectivamente, sos negra, decirle que sí. So right now we're here in Palermo, which is a thriving neighborhood in Buenos Aires. There's lots of great restaurants, street art, shops, and we're actually here in a market where there are vendors selling handmade items. Hiciste eso? So it all really reflects the Spanish and Italian influence on Buenos Aires culture and the culture of the nation um, overall. But one thing that's kind of underrepresented is the impact of African descendants here, um, which is a community that's struggled for visibility for a long time, but has really had a lasting impact on the culture. So while we're here in Buenos Aires, we really just want to explore those contributions that African Argentines have had to the culture here and what it's like day to day living as an Afro-Argentine in Buenos Aires. <laughs> The Afro-Argentine community faces a huge hurdle trying to carve out space in a culture that doesn't fully acknowledge its history. We talked to four porteños who, in their own way, The reason that they don't want to acknowledge the Afro-Argentinian history is because they do, they'd have to tell the whole story. And if they told the whole story, then of course, you know, you're in a situation where you got to talk about all these atrocities that happened to them. All right. So that's why they rather just keep it hush up. So let's continue. Please hit the like button. We need 10 more likes, 20 more likes. We've got 109 people in the chat room. We've got 90 likes. Hit the like button. If you appreciate this kind of content, hit the number one button. Are hoping to do just that. If you study, you will think that the afro Argentinian people all die in the independence war and then with the yellow fever. Uh, so they think that they, we don't exist. 
It's hard to believe that after 150 years, Carlos Alvarez Nazareno is the first Black person to hold public office in Buenos Aires. But if you know as much as he does about the country's convoluted racial consciousness, microaggression and exclusion seem par for the course. Everybody asks, oh, where are you from? Or people talk to you in English, in Portuguese, on any other language because they think that if you are Black, you are not from Argentina. If you ask an Argentine why there are so few Black people in the country, they may tell you that slavery wasn't that big in Argentina. This seems unlikely. My interest peaked. I looked to experts like Carlos to bust one of the country's biggest myths. Historians agree that at one point, descendants of enslaved Africans made up about one third of the country's population. But a series of epidemics, wars, and racist policies either pushed Argentina's Black population to flee the country or led to the unfortunate deaths of many. This turbulent history isn't really common knowledge. Schools don't include it in curriculums, leaving Black Argentines to rely on passing down stories and traditions to keep their heritage alive. (laughs) Maria Gabriela Perez, MAGA for short, is an artist who, through the encouragement of her late husband, began sharing her pride for her lineage. Más fácil al corazón de las personas, ¿no? Es decir, todas esas cuestiones de acerca de, del legado africano, del legado afroargentino, eh, acá en nuestro país. Así que, que bueno, con pintar me trajo esas satisfacciones militantes, por decirlo de alguna manera. On her daily commute, Maga may not see many faces like hers, but she sees her culture replicated everywhere. She works at a government anti-discrimination agency, INADI creating programs that highlight the influence of Africans on even some of Argentina's biggest traditions, like co-opted dancing in Carnival. In reality, in, in reality, in lo personal, I never disfrutated of the Carnival, but because I always knew that I had this story in the middle. I don't like it. My mom and my dad are porteños, and, well, they have these stories in the middle, of being people who are descendants, de personas que llegaron con la trata eh, de esclavizados y esclavizadas, ¿no? But can you just tell me like what one of the biggest myths that a lot of Argentines believe? They say that Argentinians come for the boat. Mm-hmm. And the identity of Argentina comes from the boat. But when they talk about that, they are, they are making reference about the Italian, the Spain people that came in this boat as migrants. But they don't realize that the boat that we are came by the slavery also is part of our identity. The things that they bring with the culture, with this culture, that also is part of the national identity are a lot. For example, Quilombo, Muncama, Bochinche, and also food, no? like empanadas, like different type of asado. These come from our ancestor. Every time I give a dance class, I start to speak what kind of things everybody can do to start to be an anti-racista. Blackness in Argentina can be hard to define. Often people don't call themselves black if they can avoid it. African dance instructor Alma Velasquez, which left, was one. That's not just germane to Argentina. Most black people who are people of African descent, unless they are just, unless everybody else calls them black, they don't refer to themselves as black. And that's in most uh, South American and Central American countries. They will find every other reason other than to call themselves black. Um, so let's continue listening. One of those people, but after a rude awakening from a stranger, she gained a new perspective. My grand grandmother was uh, Afro, but my father don't want to tell us that. One day, one woman asked me, are you an Afrodescendiente? And I said, no, I am not. But my grand-grandmother, yes. So she looked at me and then she said, 
but I'm so sorry, but I want to tell you that you're an Afrodescendiente. So after that, I realized that, that I have to start with all my art in a different way. I start to tell all the people all the things of history Afro that I know from Argentina and all the racismo that we have here that it's, it's too much, it's a lot. So, so that the, the main thing is she says talks about all the racism that they have and racism in their country. So that kind of proves my point. You know, oftentimes what will happen is people will come here and say things like, oh, well, you know, it's not that bad. Those are that's what the Argentinians are saying. That's what the, they're saying. It's a lot of racism. there. It's a lot. So I will tend to believe them. So here's the thing. I'm going to go ahead and open up the chat room and bring you guys in. And uh, if you want to emote, you want to tell me how this makes you feel, go ahead and do that. Shout out to Chocho. Thank you so much for the super chat. Anybody who wants to come in, maybe you guys want to refute what's being said. Maybe you think these doc documentaries and these Argent these uh, Argentinians in Argentina don't know what they're talking about. They don't know. I want somebody to come in here and tell me racism doesn't exist in, in, in South America. It doesn't exist in uh, Argentina. Um, or if you've experienced it, um, you know, let's talk about it. But in the meantime, uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. The link is in the chat room. Somebody's been asking, Jay Bones, how do you call in? Just be aware that I have a troll check system that automatically doxes people. So now I'm able to instantly dox people and you will receive a letter from my friend here, who's a district attorney, if uh, if you put any sort of uh, illicit, because this is the great state of Texas, and that will be considered illicit. And we got laws against that. So anybody who wants to come on in here and be a troll, I got that work for you, baby. But uh, uh, anybody who wants to come in, the link is in the chat room. Please join the conversation. I look forward to you guys. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe this is just a conversation that you just want to digest. You don't want to go too deep into. I understand why. We'll continue to listen. I think that Deva uh, uh, gave and gives me something that is to be very strong. So for me, it's incredible to be her mother. Valeria Lopez once found love in Senegal bringing her joy in the form of a now spirited six-year-old, Ava. After splitting with Ava's father, Vale returned to Buenos Aires where she was met with the challenges of raising a daughter of African descent. When I met her father, I loved her, I loved him, but I, I didn't see his color, you understand? I love him. With Eva, I don't, I have Ra uh, racism, but um, hide racism. Like, for example, oh, it's your daughter. Oh, what happened with her hair? It's where, where is her father? Sometimes I feel that she feels different, but not, it's Sasha. not a problem. Sasha, who is your father, Rita? Sasha? That for her is strong to have Africa to have Senegal and Argentine blood inside her. Okay. It's good to have an identity. Can you tell me a story or like a person that you met where they took your class or you listened to the information that you have and they were able to change their mind about racism in Buenos Aires? I haven't found that person. No. I think that we are in a transition. I'm not sure that all cultural barriers are over. I don't know if my feelings or my dreams, but I, know, I saw and I see that some things are, have, are changing. It's, it's, a, it's a job that everybody must work in his, his or her place to change this. 
we are here, we exist. We as black people have to be part of this, be part of the change, be, be part of the proposal, be part of the politics. It's, it's more than symbolic, you know? It is more than symbolic. Before Carlos's appointment by the... All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open the chat room up. We got some guys in here who want to talk about this. Jay Bones, G-Man, and Devin Lockett. Welcome to the chat room, gentlemen. Uh, I hope you all have hey. a pleasure. How you doing, brother? I'm good. I'm hey, how are you? You had some things you wanted to talk about. Jay Bones, yeah. you wanted, Jay Bones, you wanted to uh, discuss Argentina. What are your thoughts on this so far? Uh, first of all, brother um, Sperlin, thank you so much for having me on your platform. Uh, I got to say, get it out the way. Thank you so much for what you do. Your platform is incredibly a great channel for us, especially as young black men. Um, I actually just started listening to your content about two weeks ago, and I completely love it. So I just wanted to get that out the way. Thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you very um, much. What are your thoughts yeah. on this? Is this a surprise to you? Uh, it's actually not a surprise to me at all. Um, I got a very interesting situation to tell you. About maybe 10, 12 years back, um, I live in Jersey. I was working part-time um, at the airport here in Newark. And mm -hmm. the, Argent the Argentinian national team came through. This yeah. is right before when they had the World Cup. Um, mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the biggest stars or the biggest soccer star, his name is Le uh, Lionel Messi or Leo Messi. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure a lot of people know who he is. Yeah. I got a chance to stand next to him, you know, take pictures with him and stuff like that. And I quite remember there was a situation um, at the time I was dating a Peruvian girl. And she told me that she found it very strange that I can actually even stand next to the soccer players. And I asked her why. And she said that at one point in Argentina, during the early 1900s, they literally murdered all the black people and dumped them off into the ocean. So mm -hmm. this is not this is not something new at all. This is actually racism is very heavy within their culture because when you go into South America, one of the things that I learned about them is that they the South American countries, they have a direct relationship where they want to play some level of excuse my language, but they want to play kiss ass. They want to play kiss ass to Spain. So they they look up to the people in Spain. But in Argentina, it's worse because they have two colonial masters. They have Italian colonial masters and they have Spain colonial masters or Spanish colonial masters. So they're trying to they're trying to double up on being white. They want to be mm. extra white. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not surprised mm -hmm. about this at all. Like, during they, during my time dating, I've gotten a chance to date. You know, I dated uh, a girl from Ecuador. She told me the exact same thing. She said that over there in Argentina the chances of them ever getting any black soccer players on the national team, somebody would mm. probably have a riot in the streets. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So this is a real thing. That is pretty well, intense. So this is the gentleman that you stood next to, uh, Lionel Messi. I believe this is yep. him here. Yep. Leo yeah. Messi. Yeah. Okay. That's exactly who Leo wow. Messi. Okay. All right. Well, man, yeah. Uh, shout out to Mark Swift for kind and is very informed. Thank you for discussing this topic and the policy of Blanco Minto. Yeah, all right. Well, I do the best I can and I appreciate you guys. I, I always thought I was kind of boring. Everybody else talks about all these issues, but I kind of was talking a little bit more about some pop issues. But then I just said, man, that's not really what I do. You know, uh, I, I've been kind of, I try to make it you know, and I get a lot of viewers, but that's not really what I'm interested in. You know, I, I like having these conversations about real issues. But thank you so much, Jay Bones. And thank you to Mark Smith. Um, G-Man, what's up? Talk to me. What are your thoughts on this conversation? Well, what's going on, brothers? How you doing, man? Um, yeah, man. The one thing I can say about Argentina, they call it little Germany. So the mm. truth or the rumor has it and to confirm what that brother says is what uh, – Hitler never died. The way they told us, Hitler died down there in Argentina. So that possibly mm -hmm. could explain certain things that went down, which they never tell us the truth. But they hide the truth on these television shows, like Hunting for Nazis. They said it. Little German town down there in Argentina. Why is it like that? But see, maybe you're the first brother, one of few, who have brought up this prejudice. Now, Dennis, I'm older, man. 
I remember when the word racism doesn't didn't exist. The word mm. was just straight up called prejudice. And mm. so it's funny how they keep giving us these vernacular of words when it's just straight hate and it's all directed toward economics. This is yeah. what these so-called, what would we say? We would say these hidden Vikings, they have done all over the world. Wherever well, I mean, the thing is, they, they, I mean, it wasn't that hidden with them. They, they basically, they put all the black men at the front, front of the line with poorly planned wars. They, they dumped them in, in ghettos, made them sick, uh, didn't, didn't hospitalize them. And then the brother said, you know, basically they committed genocide by assassinating people and throwing them into the ocean. Hold on one minute. Black as God, this is a troll check. What's happening? Uh, how you doing? All right, cool. Was- Just checking on you. All right. So, G-Man, what else you want to add? What do you think about, I mean, how they exterminate them? I mean, they couldn't just outright commit genocide because then the eyes of the world came down on them. So that was a real slick way. Isn't that the same thing they did to black men in Vietnam, put us at the front of the, at the, in, in, at the front of the, uh, the, the, the front lines and, and fight those Vietnamese? That's why well, I mean- Muhammad Ali wasn't going. Yeah, well, actually, I missed that by six years because I was like a, a little kid or coming right into that teenage year. So I yeah. saw Vietnam and I saw a lot of guys come back from that. Yeah. But it, it's yeah. amazing how we're at the front line all over the world every day, all day, even right now. You're at the front line telling the truth. So yeah. at least we're doing it. At least we're trying. We're doing our best to wake up, which is to me beautiful. I, at least I get a chance to see it in my lifetime. So. That's cool. Continue the truth. That's all I can say. That's what I would say. Just continue. Well, I appreciate it, G man. Thank you so much, Devin Lockett. You've been here for a long time now. Nah. Three weeks is a oh. long time. So I'm gonna ask you a <laughs> tough question. All right, bro. Right. And and before I do, you guys make sure you get the likes up. Hit the number one button if you appreciate this conversation. Yes. You know, I, I hope y'all do. Uh, if you appreciate the conversation, hit can the I number say one something button. real quick? Not not yet, sir. Um, and okay. also, in addition to that, cont- contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. The Cash App is up there. The link is in there. Devin Lockett, why is it that our Latino, uh, fellow Latino citizens here in the United States often deny the racism that comes from many of their countries? Specifically, we're talking about Venezuela, but why is it that they deny it? And, and I, I just, like, it, it's part of their culture. The caste system is, it is part, part of their of culture. culture. I think... I, why do they continue to try to deny that? You, you know, and, and, you know, pe- people try to call it uh, la mentalidad colonial, right? The mm-hmm. colonial mentality, because every colony, every colonial country has that same white, black caste system racism mm-hmm. going on. They all do. And, well, you and, know, the, the, I think the thing is, though, Devin, in America, it don't matter what color you are other than white. You are still right. non, <laughs> you're not right. white. Exactly. There they have a color caste. They go from white to beige, to light brown. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's a little different, but it's still it's still prejudice. It's still colorism. I it's get colorism. it. They, try, they yeah. try to say, well, it's not like racism in America. Yeah, but, you know, you're still you still doing stuff down and, there. And, well, and from the, from yeah, the perspective ahead. of a person of color, it's self-hatred still. Now, it's are we talking about persons of color? Are we talking about black people? Because oh. persons of color could be those same Arabs that were buying and selling Africans. Persons of color could be Asians. True. Persons of color could be all these different people. But I know I'm, but I'm kind of right. just focused on black people right now. You're right, but I'm, I'm, call I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that mm-hmm. they're trying to fit in with us because when they come to America, they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're going to be thrown into the non-white category. So they're in the hood with us. And they, that's why they try to deny the racism in their own country and maybe even in their own parents and grandparents. Right. And, well, here's the thing. I tell people this on this page. Black people are the first line of defense against all racism that comes to this country. So if yep. you're racist, whether you come from Italy, whether you come from South America, somewhere, Central America, Asia, if you're a racist, then you're going to feel the heat from black people, we're Arab or whatever. So we're the first line of defense. And so that's why we're extra sensitive. We don't want no more races over here, whether it's called colorism or, or whatnot. And so is it that, the, and because we are still the minority of, I, I, I mean, I hate to say it, even without the numbers, we're still the minority that 
white people have to listen to because we have a vocal right group, you know. Right. And so maybe they what you're saying is, and I think this is what you they don't want to piss us off. Is that they don't want to piss us off? And 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 you know, you we are unique among the African diaspora because we're the only ones that's that still have that fighting spirit. We're the only ones that are still mm -hmm. confrontational and in your face against white racism and white supremacy. Why is that? A lot of our brothers have been broken down in different places in the diaspora. They, they, they've, you know, they've either been ground into the dust or they've accepted a defeatist attitude. I know, but what's the difference? I mean, I've, I've heard you say that today and I've heard other black people say that. Why is that? Like, why? Because, I mean, think about it. I did a story the other night and I talked about how we went from 300,000 in 1780 to, to four million in 1860, we were literally bred. They would they would they would guarantee you you black man you you get 12 women pregnant a year. Mm -hmm. Black woman, you have 15 babies. I'm gonna give you your freedom. And so the thing is, we were literally bred. So we you would think we are the ones the black folks in the least position. We don't have an African culture. We're just an amalgamation of anybody who was there, Asian, African, white. This is who we are. So. Why is it that we've maintained that fighting spirit? Talk to me. Now, that's a good question, think? brother. That's a good question. Um, because I, I think about that too. How what what percentage of black people were living here already before slavery? And how much of the spirit of the American black man is really there was three there according to the census, there were three hundred thousand Africans living in, here in, in Africa. Yes. And I'll I'll talk to BGS about this recently last night. The Africans that you're referring to, the ones that came 10, 15,000 years ago, yeah, they were here. We traversed. There was an out of Africa theory. We get it. But they're not West Africa. They don't have that same DNA that we had. Yeah, there was some Africans here, but they had changed over time. They, the Indians came down. There was some Africans here. Not the Asians came over. They interbred. They created the whole culture, Aztecs, all yeah. that. So there was no, I mean, you know, I, I hate when we try to confuse it. You know, it's almost like we're embarrassed at the fact that we were bred to be here. We're embarrassed at the fact that we were enslaved. I get that, but the DNA doesn't support those theories well, anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm only saying, I'm, I'm only thinking. Okay, if, if, if we can say that the culture did not really survive the Middle Passage, okay, because when they were stripped as slaves and brought here, no, we were bred. I understand no, see, that. See, here's what I'm saying. We were. There were 300,000 of us in the United States in 1780. Mm -hmm. And then they forced bred us. Understood. They forced bred us till we became 4 million in 1860. But our culture still evolved. How did that happen? The, the culture that we have is, right. is not really a culture because it's failing us right, there, right now. Absolutely. A culture, Absolutely. according to Dr. Amos, uh, Wilson is supposed to help you answer the questions that your people face. The right. culture that we have is not helping us out at all. It's causing us to right. kill each other. We got self-hate. We got women that don't like their skin color. Right. You can't, the men can't talk to the women. It's a whole lot of issues. I get that. And or I mean, I'm telling you guys, check out BGS. Please look at his story on 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 on, on Saint on uh 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 my god, what's that president's name? I forget his name, man. Thomas Thomas Jefferson. He goes BGS into Ibmore? BGS Ibmore. He goes into detail about how uh, Thomas Jefferson was the architect of the breeding programs that they had here in the United States. Done because they they wanted to make money. Virginia didn't have the land necessary. The land well, they had the land, but the land had been stripped of all its nutrients because of over planting, and so because of that. They had to go into some other kind of business, and their business was going to be breeding slaves, and and that's how they did it, and that's why we went from three hundred thousand in seventeen eighty to uh, four million in eighteen uh, eighteen sixty, right before the Civil War kicked off, and it's um, like that's the only explanation. Like we were bred, yeah, we're bred, and if you do, I've done my research. I can trace my, I can trace my, I can trace my heritage black back. To a plantation in Virginia, so shout out to BJS. But go ahead, Devin, and then we're gonna. I'm gonna check that out, brother. Thank you. Uh, the movie uh, Goodbye Uncle Tom uh, talks a lot about that, the breeding yeah. farms, 
and how they how they set that up. But you see, the thing is, it is still our responsibility in the absence of a culture Mm -hmm. to form and create a culture now that is actually going to uh, serve us as people. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. And I'm I'm, I'm gonna go to Black as God. I'm gonna come back to you guys. Um, You guys, if you appreciate this conversation, make sure you contribute to the super chat, the cash app, and the PayPal. I know that these conversations are uncomfortable. I, I'm looking at you guys. I know that they're uncomfortable. They're supposed to be. I wish somebody had told me this when I was 15 so I could have dealt with it by now. Because if you had told me, oh my God, do you know this is how they treat black folks? Oh, okay. So I would have been able to keep my uh, my shields up. Because see, a lot of you brothers are going to these other countries and you're like, oh yeah, that's why SBM is so much better. They're treating you better because you're an American. Yeah, you're black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're of African descent, but you're an American. And see, that blue passport does something for you. But see, what you got to understand is there are some black people in those countries right now, whether it's the Dominican Republic, Colombia, whether it's uh, uh, Brazil, Argentina, obviously, Peru, all these... They will tell you what it's really like for the t- typical African person who's from there. They will tell you. Now, don't confuse the fact that they're treating you like you're an American uh, with the fact that you're still black wherever you go. They're still looking at you sideways. You see, the bottom line is you're an American. They perceive you as having money, and most likely you do. So we're going to keep it 100. That's why it's being them all day. Love yourself, go on, enjoy yourself, do what you do, but recognize there's still anti-black racism in many of those countries. I'm not here lying to you. I've lived in those countries and I'm telling you it exists. I see it. I see how Haitians are treated in the Dominican Republic. And I got friends of the Dominican. I hear the conversations. Sometimes I'll say things just to hear what their response is. You see what I mean? Because they look at me and they're like, okay, he's he's like us. But they don't know the vast majority of my family members, including my grandmother, who I love to death, is darker than Jay Bones right here. You see what I'm saying? And my father himself is about Jay Bones' color. It just so happens that my mother is a little bit more fair skinned than me from Mississippi. So the attitudes are there. And you shouldn't lie to yourself and think that you done went to this heaven on earth. It's not like that. Yeah, they'll tolerate you. But again, you bringing money, bro. So just it's just like being a rich Negro here. It, <laughs> you know what I mean? You you gonna get treated better if you LeBron James as opposed to regular old bro folk. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, uh, thanks, Devin. Black is God. What's happening? Unmute yourself. Um, I don't know if you know this, but in the Hispanic countries, they're actually like um, like they got they got something called clearing the blood uh, bloodline, where they're like basically like mixing with white, and basically they're just. It's not just they're anti, you know, black. And even Dominicans, they they don't even want, want to be uh black, even though they're mixed in. Like they're very well, mo- mixed most in. of them, most of them won't claim their African heritage, even if you know, even if it's obvious. I get it, you know. But but the thing is, man, that's colorism, and we got colorism right now in America. Like we got sisters that tell you about colorism all day. If I open up this, if I just said we're going to talk about colorism today on Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, it would be filled up with women telling you about colorism. So we suffer from the same issues, which is a byproduct of the brainwashing we receive from white supremacy racism, which, says, even... which says that white is, is better. You, you see what I'm saying? So it, it's, not, it's not just germane to the South America. Go to Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, you deal with it right now. Hell, 20, 30 years ago, they were still calling it bad hair, nappy hair, ugly, black. You see what I'm saying? Uh, but go ahead, brother. See, I'm 17. I didn't even know the uh, Spaniards had slaves. I didn't even know that. Mm. Well, I'm yeah, just brother, about you, it this year. You got to, you got to, you know what? You're a young man, and uh, it's a whole lot to learn. It's best to learn it early. That's my suggestion to you. Learn it early so you know. But see, here's the thing. You still, it's just another, like I had uh, Joe Matt, uh, John, uh, Judge Joe Brown on the other day. And uh, he basically is just another adversary. None you run away from. Just like lions wasn't running. From, the Africans weren't running from the lions. They weren't hiding up in castles afraid of the lions. They went out there and they conquered those lands. 
You see what I'm saying? So so it is what it is. Uh, but Jay Bones, man, what else you want to say about this conversation? Well, I think this is a great topic of discussion because um, I'm going to add two things to the conversation, uh, Brother Sperlin. Um, surprisingly to say, myself, a little bit of background, I wasn't actually, I'm not an American. I was actually born in Ghana. And um, I was raised here. I moved here uh, in the 90s when I was a kid with my parents. My first experience of racism didn't come from white people. I was, I was completely, I was wildly confused. Like, we grew up in Newark, New Jersey. And mm -hmm. in Newark, we grew up there in the 90s. There ain't no white folks around there. They call you There's not one character. single white person. <laughs> it was called exactly, you. yeah. Badass kids. The only... The, <laughs> they, they call the only me white Devin, look, bro. They call me and Devin White. You white. You ain't even black. You gonna get it. That's how black kids are. They gonna find a reason. They will find it's true. something. I used to I saw so many people in the side of the mouth messing with me. I had to come up with something. I'm like, I ain't, I ain't light skinned. I'm a red ninja. You gonna try some? You know, you gotta, you gotta have an edge feel, when you go to school with these kids, man. But go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I feel you. I feel you, brother Sperling. Let me let me tell you something. The only white folks that I saw was when I landed at JFK Airport. Mm -hmm. That was the only time I ever saw white people. So we landed at JFK. This was back in 98 or 97. And oh, then the school teachers was white too? Well, I went to a private school in, um, in Newark. I went to private school in Newark. So the, the teachers there were actually white. The, the closest thing to a black teacher was the Puerto Rican gym teacher. That's pretty much it. Well, you did deal with some white folks over there. Yeah. I guess, yeah. 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 And surprisingly, I'm going to tell you one thing, um, Brother Sperlin, my first reaction of racism in America, it didn't come from white people. Mm -hmm. we, we, we lived in a um, we lived in an apartment, um, a high rise apartment in Newark, New Jersey in uh, North Newark. And if anybody in Jersey knows, North Newark is full of Hispanic people, uh, Salvadorians, Guatemalans, Nicaraguans, Costa Ricans, mm -hmm. Puerto Ricans, everything damn Rican lives over there. Right. And. I remember one time I was walking across the street to the Burger King. This was probably back in 97 or 98. And somebody just screamed out the N-word. And I turned around. And, yeah, <laughs> I turned around and, you know, I, I look back and I'm like, you know, it, it's confused. It was confusing at the time because we're from Africa. So I'm like, are they talking to wait, me or? Are, I mean, are they talking? Are they talking to me? Wait, who they? Wait, are you talking about ER? No, 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 yeah. no, Jersey here in New yeah, Jersey. Well, and it was a Puerto Rican or some Latino person or white. It was, it was, it was some Puerto Ricans <laughs> that lived in our neighborhood. It was some Puerto Ricans that lived yeah, in the neighborhood. Man, you know that that's that's what you got to deal with. Everybody's low key racist up there. Even the black people are racist against each other. The white people are racist against each other. You got to look at the history. Even when the white folks came to New York and New Jersey. I mean, they got all kind of derogatory names for each other. I mean, I don't even want to talk about it, but I mean, they would refer to each other as these derogatory names. They would all kind of, they would hit each other. If you were from Poland, if you were Irish, if you were uh, uh, Italian, they are Jewish, they had a name for you. Like, damn, that's fighting words. You know what I mean? So they are, it, that's what they do. That's that, that might just be part of their culture and see it, it, it carries over. You see what I'm saying? Because when I was in L.A., man, in the locker room, uh, I had a homeboy named, well, he wasn't my friend. He just, he was a senior, and I was a, a freshman, and his name was Chris, and then he was a big, tall, black brother. He about 6'6", 300 pounds, and then Miguel, his homeboy, who play, they both played offensive tackle and defensive tackle. He was about six feet tall, 300 pounds. And he was Hispanic. His name was Miguel Jimenez and then Chris Baker. They would call each other all sort of racist, derogatory names in the locker room. I mean, it's like, my God. And I'm just like sitting there. I don't want no smoke. Let me be quiet. But like, this is entertaining. And then they get out on the field and play ball together. You see what I'm saying? So it there is part of, a, look, racism is so intertwined in the American culture. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, if you took the racism out of American culture, it, it wouldn't even be the same thing. It's as interwoven in the American culture as apple pie. And now that I know how this country was founded, now that I understand, like, if you look at Dr., uh, I believe it's Dr. Holmes. I forget the brother's name. I, I want to uh, make sure I get his name correctly. We, uh, he's, a, he's a professor here at, um, 
he's a Dr. Horn. His name is Dr. Horn, and he's a professor here. At, at, and I put a I put a show up about it the other day. Gerald Horn, and he said basically this whole country was founded because of anti-black racism. So if you remove the racism from it, it won't it, it won't even be the same. So that's just something you got to deal with. That's why I tell. That's why I understand SYSBM. I tell my brothers all the time, a stolen people in a stolen land will never have peace. So you should find somewhere else to go. Get your money here, make all your money, keep your money coming in and bounce. You see what I'm saying? But uh, go ahead, brother. I'm gonna let you finish, and then Devin, what I will get, get get some more. What you got to say? Yeah. So um um probably I would say, brother Sperling, too. One one of the things that um I try to tell some of the brothers that um. You know, I, I was really happy to have my father around before he passed away. He taught me a lot mm -hmm. of things. Um, he 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 actually was a real traveling man. So before I turned like 13, I had already been to probably I've been to Switzerland twice, mm -hmm. Germany three times, uh, been to uh, been to Canada, been to England, been to Morocco, Chad, Mozambique, Togo, Ghana, Nigeria. Uh, Belgium, Amsterdam. My, my father used to In take me around. Right. Yeah, yeah. My father was very serious about us, you know, seeing the world. And he used to, he used to talk a lot of he used to talk a lot of very, you know, Pan African talk to us when we were kids. And you know, I'm the I'm the youngest out of eight boys, so he was very serious. Yeah, he was very serious with us. And I quite remember there was a situation um, when I first started traveling, and we were moving into different countries. I met one of the brothers in the nation of Islam in Newark, and he told me one, he actually told me personally to my face, he said, listen, I know some of you brothers go down to South America, don't go into Argentina, that's the first thing mm. I'm going to tell you. Mm. Second, learn how to speak Spanish, and when you go into these countries, I know you, I know some, some of you brothers are going down there to, you know, stretch your legs out a little bit and meet some of the ladies, but remember one thing, if you're going to bring anything back, make sure it's a black woman. Mm. Well... I appreciate that, bro. Thank you so much. I'm gonna have a talk about that later on. But I don't bring none of them back, even where they at. But uh, <laughs> either way, Jay Bones, thank you so much, man. Devin Lockett, what else you want to add? And look, y'all get the likes up, man. We got 162 people in the chat room. And got you want me to keep doing stuff like this? Then y'all need to get the likes up. If you want me to continue putting these Black History moments on in nine Black History Month. And y'all need to go ahead and, and get the likes up. All I'm asking you, don't cost anything to hit the like button. That's the first thing. So hit the like button, fam. That's all I'm asking you to do. Hit the like button and check in. Let me know where you're calling in from or where you're viewing this from. In addition to that, contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. Devin Lockett. Man, you got D, man. man. It's another great topic, brother. And yeah. I'm, glad you, I'm glad you brought it up, man, because, you know, you know, I, I it wasn't until I saw your other video on the farms that it really darn mm -hmm. dawned on me that we are our own people in this yeah. world. And 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 now that they've kind of divided us from our women, black men in particular, we are our own army. We are our own people and we're being attacked from every direction, uh, even unfortunately by half of our own race right now. Yeah. And and yeah, I mean, so this is this is this is real. You know, I worked in over 32 countries in the Caribbean and Latin America and, uh, you know, repairing medical equipment. I've, I've seen like every level of society. And, you know, I, I, I picked up on that. I peeped that 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 mm -hmm. that white supremacy, racism type of mentality is something that persists all over the world. And and hey, I mean, you know, I'm I'm, I'm up in years, but I continue to fight every yeah. single day. Yeah. You know? Well, man, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys, man. Thank you, brother. Uh, you know, I try to do this. You know, it's uncomfortable. I know this is not what you yeah. want to hear while you're working out or on the road doing your trucking game thing. But I think it's important, you know, because otherwise you don't know. We had a little 17-year-old brother on here. He just didn't even know the Spanish had slaves. As if, you know, think about Christopher Columbus. Who sent him over here? The Queen mm -hmm. of Spain. What was the first thing he thought? Brought slaves back. Tying those slaves back to Spain. They started the slave trade. Gave them to the Pope. Gave slaves to the Pope. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is that, you know, it's important to know the world. I'm not saying don't travel. I'm not saying don't go different. Go to wherever you want to go, but just know what you're dealing with. I wouldn't be Uncle D, right? I wouldn't be somebody who said I cared about you if I didn't talk to you about, if I just, yeah, man, go there, don't worry. 
if I that's like me sending you to Nazi Germany in 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 in, in thirteen uh, uh, eight, uh, 1939 and you're a black person or a Jewish person. I'm supposed to tell you, look, man, keep your heads up. You know, keep your head up, know what's going on. Um, but again, you know, racism is, you know, Argentina has a sword history. And I don't care how many how much you know Latinos try to deny it, they know that they have a, a color uh issue. They know that they have a color caste system very similar to the one that we held fast to back before the 1920s, but back before black power came into play, back before the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Marcus Garvey, and all these other people came and started saying, be proud of being black. I'm black and I'm proud. It, it was there and we just have to accept it. So they're about 100 years behind us, folks. some of them about 200 years. So way, yeah. man, this is Uncle D. I appreciate you guys. Thank you Thanks, so brother. much, Jay Bones. Thank you, Devin Lockett. I appreciate you guys. Y'all be blessed. And be as blessed. I always said this time, I'm out.